everyone, I'm Professor Flores, and today I'll be demonstrating for you how to do dressing change on a central Venus access device. This is for skills validation. So I'm going to go ahead and start by knocking on the patient's door. I'm going to knock, knock, knock. May I come in? I'm going to close the door behind me to provide patient privacy. Okay, I'm going to perform hand hygiene for at least 20 to 30 seconds per CDC guideline. I'm going to don some clean gloves. And I'm going to provide an environmental safety check. I'm checking the room that it's free of clutter. There's no obstructions. I'm going to confirm that the bed is locked in the lowest position. I'm going to check that oxygen and suction are working. And I'm going to introduce myself. Good morning, my name is Danica. I'm going to be your nurse for today. Before I get started, could you verify your name and date of birth for me, please? All right, we have Miss Susan Jones. Date of birth is 1-1-1950. And Miss Jones, do you have any allergies that I should be aware of? Amoxicillin? Okay, thank you for letting me know. So Miss Jones, the reason why I'm here today is because a doctor has ordered for you a central venous access device dressing change. Now this is done per hospital policy at least every seven days or if visibly soiled to prevent infection. Now what this entails me to do is looking at your site, I'm going to be touching around it, I'm going to remove your old dressing, clean around the site, and place a new one. While this is all being done, I'm going to wear a mask and you're going to wear one as well. Do you have any questions for me before we get started? No? Wonderful. So I've already performed hand hygiene. I'm going to go ahead and don my sterile gloves and gather my supplies. Clean gloves. OK, at this time, I'm going to raise up the bed to ensure proper body mechanics. I want to make sure that I raise the bed up to at least my waist level to ensure that I don't break sterility throughout the procedure. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and bring this side rail down. And now I'm going to place a mask on myself. And Ms. Cruz, I'm going to go ahead and place this mask on you as well. Can I have you now please turn away from the insertion site so you're going to look over to your left. Wonderful, thank you. I'm going to open up my biohazard bag. And I'm just going to place it right down here next to me. So while I'm here at the site, I'm going to go ahead and start by assessing. I'm looking for any redness, drainage, and I'm going to start palpating, feeling for any warmth or tenderness. None is noted. So at this time, I'm just going to go ahead and remove the tape that's holding down the catheters. and. To prevent migration or movement, I'm going to use two fingers to secure this center bio patch. And I'm going to begin by peeling away the dressing from the outer to the inward. Okay, sorry, Ms. Jones, it's going to be a little uncomfortable as I pull this away. So you can roll it towards the center and keep your fingers here to stabilize the catheter. Once I have reached towards the center, I can slowly remove the dressing with the bio patch. Now I can go ahead and dispose of this in my biohazard bag. Now that the site is open and exposed, I'm going to do a visual inspection to make sure that there's no redness, drainage, or swelling, which none is noted. I'm also going to assess the length of the catheter. I'm noting the markings on the catheter line, and I'm mentioning that I did check my previous nurse's documentation to ensure no migration is noted. And I do confirm there's no movement or migration noted. So now I'm going to go ahead and remove my gloves and perform hand hygiene so I can begin setting up my sterile field. To set up my sterile field, there's a couple of places that I can set up on the patient's bed. One option would be to have the patient position themselves to the left side, ensuring that the other side rail is also up. But for today's purposes, I'm going to set up my sterile field over on top of the patient's chest. So I'm going to take out my dressing tray here, and I'm going to keep my biohazard bag right on the edge of the patient's bed right there to dispose of my supplies. I'm going to open up my sterile tray 
and I'm going to open my drape away from me. Open it side to side. So we can see that we have some extra supplies here. We have a mask and sterile gloves. I brought my own, so I'm just going to go ahead and dispose of this as well. I'm going to open up the flap away from me, and I'm going to go ahead and position my sterile kit. Okay. Now that that is placed, there's some additional items that I need to utilize during the procedure, which would be a second CHG. What I would do is step away from my sterile field, open it away, and drop it in six inches above. Next, I need a bio patch. I'm also going to open this away from my sterile field, and I'm going to drop it in six inches above. If at any point I broke sterility and needed to get another supply, I would verbalize so during my validation. The last thing that I would need to open is my Cavalon or my skin prep. Because this is a wet item, I don't want to drop it into my sterile field, but rather open it as an extension. So I'm going to place it here, careful not to cross over my sterile field, and I'm going to open it slowly. And I'm going to leave it tucked in right here, where it's nice and accessible for me later on. Okay, once I have my sterile field set up and I'm comfortable with my placement, I'm now going to go over to the head of the bed where I will don my sterile gloves. Okay, just going to move this call light over. I'm going to start by donning my dominant hand, which for me is on my right. So I'm going to grab the cuffed inner portion, bring up my sterile glove, and don my right hand. Next, I'm going to hold on to the paper here so it doesn't move up with my glove. And I'm going to insert my fingers into the cuff portion of my left sterile glove. I'm going to bring my sterile glove up and don it on my left hand. I'm careful to keep my thumb away so it doesn't touch my bare forearm. Okay, once I have my sterile gloves on, I'm just going to leave the paper here and I'm gonna move over to my sterile field. This is optional, however, I'm going to arrange my supplies in the order that I need them. Careful not to cross over my one inch border. Okay, so what I'm also going to do here is crease my dressing a little bit to help me when I remove it for my dressing change. So now that I'm prepared, I'm going to take my alcohol swab stick. I'm going to open it away from my field so that I don't get any liquid onto my sterile drape. And I'm going to take one alcohol swab stick and dispose of this in my biohazard. Now I'm going to purposely contaminate my non-dominant hand, grabbing the catheter and holding it upward as I begin to clean. So Ms. Jones, I'm going to go ahead and start cleaning your central line. It's going to be a little cold. I'm going to place the alcohol swab down and in a circular motion going from inward to outward, creating somewhat of a ripple effect to clean the site. We're doing this for about 30 seconds. Okay, we're going 30 seconds have passed. I'm going to allow that to air dry. I'm going to carefully step around my sterile field and toss this into my biohazard bag. Next, I'm going to grab my first core prep. I'm going to activate it by cracking it, shaking it, and now I'm going to clean my site using a scrubbing motion, also from inward to outward for about 30 seconds. 30 seconds have passed. I'm allowing that to air dry. I'm going to come around and toss this into my biohazard bag. Next, I'm going to grab my second CHG. I'm going to crack it, shake it, and now I'm going to clean the length of the catheter using a snake-like motion. So I want to make sure that I'm not going up and down as to not introduce the bacteria from the top to the bottom. And I'm cleaning it right until I get 
up here to where the clamps are. Once that's complete, I'm gonna come around and toss this also into my biohazard bag. Next, I'm gonna grab my skin prep and I'm going to make a perimeter around where the tegaderm would lie. So the tegaderm that we have here is somewhat of a oval. So I'm going to create an oval just around the site. Once that's complete, I'm gonna come and toss this into my biohazard bag and I will now grab my blue bio patch. For my bio patch, I wanna make sure that the blue side is facing up. As we can see, we have a blue side and a white spongy side. You want the blue side facing up. And I'm just going to put this around the catheter and I'm gonna have the slit facing downward so that when I line it up, it'll allow for easy removal for the next dressing change. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab my dressing here. And remember that little crease that we made? This is gonna help me to remove the backing without breaking sterility. So I'm gonna peel that back gently and I'm gonna let that go. I'm gonna make sure we have a bit of a coil on the line so that we don't have any tugging or migration. And I'm gonna place this gently down so that my bio patch is nice and centered and we can place the coil through the slit. Once my dressing has been applied, I no longer have to maintain sterility. So I'm going to remove the borders of this dressing And if you can see here, there's two pieces of tape attached to this border that we can utilize to help secure our catheter. So we're going to secure one right here at the slit to prevent any movement or migration. And we will take this second piece of tape to secure the top of the line to the patient so that it prevents any tugging or movement. Once I've completed this here, I'm going to label my dressing with the date, time, and my initials. Okay, Ms. Jones, I have now completed your central line dressing chain. Let me gather up my supplies, and I'm gonna go ahead and remove the mask that I have on you. And you can turn your head forward, wonderful. I'm going to raise back up the side rails and lower your bed to the lowest position. I have your call light here within reach. Do you have any questions for me or do you need anything from me before I leave your room? No, I just wanna say you did a great job, Ms. Jones. Thank you very much. I'm going to remove my gloves, dispose of my supplies, perform hand hygiene and exit the room.